Okay, so we're going to dive in and we're going to go a little deeper now, and this is going to be a lot of fun. Now, I talked about indirect versus direct openers, uh, uh, and last week, well, let's do a quick little uh, review. For, for last week, you guys should have a journal. You should have done your commitments. If you haven't watched last week's video, make sure to go back and watch it. You should have been doing your revealing process videos for uh, at least a week now. You should be writing in that journal um, all the stuff you're learning and realizing. And if you are, I want to have you comment in the video about the stuff you're learning and realizing. You can be direct openers. You can be doing indirect openers. It doesn't matter which one you do. You can be doing them to your level. It could be a simple little where you're shaking and you're like, yeah, hi, I just want to know where Starbucks is because you're nervous. And uh, and then maybe you followed up with, oh, so you're from around here? And it's just a short little conversation. You get out of there because you're just working on calming your nervous system down so you can get calm enough so that you can start focusing on quality of conversation. Because it's really hard to get quality while you're shaking and while you're nervous. And I get a lot of clients that are such nice guys, they're terrified to approach, especially beautiful women in the beginning. So that's the first step. Start working on that, getting that stuff out of the way. Again, if you haven't watched first week's video, haven't done the first week, go back and start with the first week and then move to this. This one. The two types of approaches that I had you doing, depending on where you're at, what you want to work on, and that's really up to you, is a more of an indirect kind of a video where you're learning to just see something and, and blurt out or, or, or make a comment and, and then uh, uh, in the environment. It's typically in the environment. It's in something she's doing or in something uh, that somebody's saying that you make a comment about and then you you play with it, you add to it, and then you can ask a question or make a statement and move forward from there. And that's that just creates conversation. It's a great conversational tool whether you start a conversation with that or whether you use that tool to continue a conversation you're already in. You can even, if you get really good at it, you can get really good at playing with tension with that, that tool set. You gotta practice it though, you gotta work it, you gotta, you gotta play with it, you can add tension to conversations with it, you can raise the tension, drop the tension, all kinds of stuff. And uh, that's what I kinda wanna talk about today. And then there's the direct openers, getting into the direct openers. So for the first one, for the indirects, one of the things uh, that you can do with indirects is just get really good at being aware. I want you to, this week, I want you to walk into uh, any environment and I want you to look around and say you're at a coffee shop, look around and notice things going on. Notice actions, notice objects, and notice things people are saying. And then find the ones that are the most interesting to you. Um, something that, that you're curious about and uh, something that you're authentically curious about. Don't make up curiosity. Don't pretend to be curious. Something you appreciate, something that you have an emotional response towards is actually probably the best way. Curiosity is one of the most powerful emotions, but any emotion can really work. It's something that frustrates you, something that annoys you. As long as you don't wallow in it or, or get heavy with it, you can, you can, uh, you can comment about it. And, uh, and go from there. So let's say you're standing next to a cute girl. Right by my house, there's a coffee shop. I like to use real scenarios because you can actually, when demoing, I can relate to a real scenario better. So uh, I'm standing at the coffee shop. There's a, there's a coffee shop right at my house and, I, and there's a cute girl standing next to me in yoga pants and a workout outfit. Maybe she got a little backpack on. And I'm like, oh, I can see you. I can see you like to work out a lot. And she'll be like, yeah. And I'll be like, you know, is there a gym around here? I just moved to the area. Something like that. Simple observation start a question because I do like to work out a lot, right? Oh, where's there a really good gym around here? I just moved to the area. I need a, I, I need a good gym. And she can start conversing right there. It's just a natural process of opening and moving towards conversation. This is great for people developing conversational skills. You can start to add more banter to it and uh, you can start to add more fun to it. You can say something like, uh, again, we got this girl standing next to me in a cute workout outfit and I'll be like, I'll be like, obviously you just came from the gym, right? Is there a really good gym around here? Cause I need a good gym. I just moved to the area and she'll be like, oh yeah, there's one next door. What I'm really looking for is a good kickboxing class. You, you look like you can kick some ass. Um, I bet you, I bet you put a few guys down, right? And then you kind of play with it from there. Something like that. And you can start to add humor to it. What I'm doing there is playing with the tension of that conversation, starting to add a little banter. And how I developed that was really simple. I would just pick, like I said before, any word, object, or action in the environment. And I would sit in a coffee shop for 15 minutes every morning and I would journal down something that I could riff on, play with. I would see the gym bag, I'd riff on that. And I would just pick a random object. I'd hear somebody say something. Uh, they, might, they might order a coffee in some weird way and screw up the word and then I'll play with that a little bit. 
uh, I'll see the barista look at somebody and make a uh, get a little annoyed because the customer is being annoying. And then I'll walk up and and I might comment. I'll comment on that action of the annoyance that she's having and uh, and and play with that a little bit. And I'll write these down in my journal. I'll write two or three different scenarios down every day, just a few a day. And over time, my brain starts to come up with shit to say and I start saying, saying stuff spontaneously. That's how I work on my riffing and playing. I called it riffing back then or vibing and riffing uh, to play with um, what was going on in the environment. And, uh, and I would work on that every day a little bit, and then I would go practice it. In the beginning, it might be as simple as, as uh, oh, well, I see you got a pizza there. Where'd you, and I've literally done this to people. I say, where, hey, where'd you get that pizza, man? I'm, I'm dying for some pizza right now. And they'll be like, oh, it's right up the block right here. And I'll be like, well, can I have a piece of yours? And I'll give them that little big eye thing. And they'll be like, what? And a lot of times they'll go, well, yeah. And they'll ha- wanna hand it to you. And usually I don't take it, but I, I I had a client that he did that and he did take it, so whatever. Um, and uh, and that's really cool. I walked up to one girl and she was eating french fries. And I was like, damn, those french fries look good. She was at Palm Frites in New York. And I said, damn, those french fries look good. She goes, oh, they're really good. And I said, do you mind if I have one? And she went, what? And I just reached in and took it. She started laughing and it was perfect. So this is what I mean. You observe something, you comment on it, and then you can take an action, you can make a comment, you can play with it from there. And the journaling about these different things helps to develop the spontaneity. I would journal for 10, 15 minutes every morning, uh, things that I could riff on, word, action, or object, until they started to come out of me spontaneously. It only took about a week and stuff started to come out of me spontaneously. I'm gonna give you one more. I walked up to a cashier. This was at an El Pollo Locos when I first started writing these down. And every day I was writing stuff down. I was learning to step into tension a little bit. And I saw this, uh, uh, girl, she was she was she was taking my order. Excuse me, I got a little thought lost in my thought. She was taking my order, and she couldn't give me the chance. She didn't have enough quarters, so she's ripping up one of those plastic quarter containers, trying to get the quarters out. And she was having trouble. And she was looking down. She was getting frustrated, and I was sitting there. And I remember I was nervous because I'd never done this before. This was a long time ago, and I looked at her and I looked down and I went, "Come on, come on! I don't have all day. Like you're you're, you're taking way too long here." And I was smiling, but she couldn't see me smiling. So she's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry." And then she looked up and saw me smiling. And then she goes, oh, well, maybe I just won't give you your order. You, I saw her whole attitude change. She started playing back. And then I laughed and she laughed. I don't remember what was said from there. I just remember the initial conversation. And then she goes, here, have a free drink. And she handed me a large drink. And I took it and I was like, wow, that was really cool. So I got my large drink. And then every time I came in after that, I started to get free drinks. Then I started to flirt with three of them. Next thing you know, I was getting free food. And this started to go on and on and on because I was playing with that exact skill set I talked about, word, action, or object. And I was just, again, journaling. And then I was taking action, stepping into courage by taking action and doing it. Does it all have to be bantery? No, it doesn't actually. I can come in and just like my initial uh, uh, time, I, I made that comment on the monitor at Apple. Uh, that was I'd never thought of it consciously like that before. I'd been doing it for a while and I just went, hey, this is a huge monitor. Would you really want a monitor like that in your house? Isn't that kind of too big? Something like that. And then we just started talking and it started flowing from there. So those create indirects, okay? Um, same thing, you stop somebody on the street. Hey, I see you have a Converse bag. Uh, I have been looking for Converse for the last hour. Can you direct me to Converse? And if you can't get creative and spontaneous yet, just keep it simple and let them go. Wherever you're at, you're at, you're going to build your way up and then journal about it. Now, if you're going direct, direct is a different story. Uh, direct, you have to really play with the tension a bit more and you have to open your heart more. And that's why these medita- these revealing process meditations, learning to feel your body are so important because if you're in your head when you do this, you'll come across as contrived or controlled and it won't feel good. So all I'm going to say about direct is for this week, I want you to focus on relaxing into your body, open your heart and create a little tension. Imagine you could create a conduit from you to her and then relax it a little bit. So if I'm looking at the camera and I make it too much, I'm gonna have bug eyes, I'm gonna be pushing. If I'm really relaxed, I'm gonna be stoned, I'm gonna be wise. So I'm gonna look, I'm gonna find that sweet spot. I'm gonna focus in right at you and then I'm gonna relax it enough where there's a sense that I can feel her emotions coming to me. So a conduit is like a hose 
And then what comes back in the center of the hose, you know, where the water would be, is her emotions flowing back to me. That's the feeling I want. And we do this with the models in the classrooms. If you want to learn more about this, get real world practice, contact us, and we can help to hook you up with a class where you can actually learn this. Because for some people, it does take a little training if they're really numbed out. But if you got it, you got it. So uh, get out there. And when you walk up, you can literally walk up and say hi. And if you create enough tension and you're grounded enough, you can be like, I just wanted to meet you. My name is Brian. And that's an introduction. You're just introducing yourself. She'll get it, right? And uh, and you go from there. You might come up and say something like, uh, uh, put a little identity on her, where you might walk up and say, hi, you know, I saw you from over there and you just look really cool and I had to come say hi to you. Or you look really nice and I had to come say hi to you. Or you just got a great vibe about you and I had to come say hi to you. What's that do? Well, what that does is it projects onto her a persona and then there's a good chance if she finds you attractive at all or interesting or you're grounded enough that she'll want to play into that persona he thinks i'm cool i want to be cool he thinks i'm nice right um if you want to create more tension you can walk up and say you know damn i, I was standing over there and you were damn sexy or there's something about you you got a really sexy vibe and you create more tension with that and you know a little bit of cussing a little bit of tension by calling her sexy that takes it up a notch so those are three examples of direct approaches and then you say hi and then you might if you want to leave your name out that creates a little more tension if you want to put your name in hi i'm brian what's yours that'll you you feel that decrease the tension a bit and you play with it you show her you can manage tension so those are your directs and then from there you journal after it's all done and said you get to do your directs have a nice conversation flow from there relax talk a little bit whether whichever type you're doing and then i want you to journal down what you're learning what you're experiencing i want you to listen to your revealing process and um and if you can remember to read them read your journal the things you're learning right before you go to bed so you take them into your dreams and that's pretty much it guys that is a powerful powerful process this is week two you're playing with indirects directs you're doing two to three a day right um if you do more that's just bonus it doesn't buy, that doesn't say if you do, if I do six today it doesn't mean I don't have to do any tomorrow. So you're doing two to three a day, and uh, you're going to meet your minimum every day. And if you want to do extra, that's up to you. If you got a Saturday and you got a whole afternoon free and you're having a blast, go do it. Just don't burn yourself out. Don't force yourself. Okay. You're listening to your two different reveals, and we're going from there. This is week two. Make sure to comment in the video what you're learning, what you're realizing, how you're growing, how you're changing. I definitely want to hear that how you're playing with tension this week. If you're going to add the piece where you practice the indirects or if you're just going to go right for the directs. And honest truth, the directs are easier, guys. They're easier in the sense that you don't have to think as much, but they're harder in the sense that you have to be really centered in the tension and you have to calm, you have to open your heart, you have to relax in the tension. And that's where the body scan meditation really helps is to to help you relax into that tension, okay? Next week, we're gonna be taking this up a notch. We're gonna be working on these conversational skills a little bit more. And so I wanna make sure you get a week's up worth of practice in this week, and then we're gonna be going from there. So I'll see you in next week's video. Again, make sure to comment, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to share the video. Please do that, it's awesome. It helps us to grow the channel. And with that said, remember only the confident really live so i want to take a moment and i want to acknowledge you for going through this uh series on becoming better with women it's a powerful series i'm really enjoying it and i'm really enjoying teaching you uh how to direct approach women how to approach women indirectly how to use uh banter push pull to connect with women better how to uh, qualify women and how to get that phone number. These skills are essential and they're, they're powerful skills. But if you're still having trouble communicating with women, you're still having trouble connecting with women, it might be more of something around the area of the way you're being. You see, the biggest problem I had wasn't doing the techniques. I learned the techniques a long time ago. The biggest problem I had was who I was being. Was I being grounded and rock solid as a man? Was I being re reactive or proactive? You know, proactivity is so powerful. Reactivity just pushes women away, no matter how many of these techniques you get right. Was I running from tension or was I stepping into tension, owning tension and enjoying it? Did I have any sense of vulnerability in my communication, the ability to connect emotionally, or was I walled off and shut off? 
You see, who you're being before you say a word and the way you move and walk and talk and carry yourself is actually the number one thing that's gonna get you good with women. It's way more important than the things you do. The things you do then get fueled by that and they get supercharged. If you do these things and you don't have a strong sense of beingness, you can actually push women away. But if you do these things and you have a powerful sense of beingness, you pull women in. It's like a magnet. One side pushes away, the other side pulls in. So if you wanna be that part of the magnet that pulls women in, then check out my new book, The Art of Fearless Seduction. There's gonna be a link in this video somewhere and uh, it goes through all of these qualities, the qualities that make you a powerful, connected, grounded man that turns on women before you even move a finger. And then you put these techniques in the series on top of that and everything will change, okay? So click on the link in the video, get started right away, and I'll see you in the next video.